All right, let's do some simple registration in this video over here. So let's make a brand new project. So we'll do a target based registration. Before you do target based registration, you do have to just verify that in your target list, you actually have the right targets that are going to be actively recognized. I know in this data set, I only have the smaller spheres. So these are the right ones. Let me go back into general and switch this back to feet because I want to be in US survey feet. All right, let's import, import scans. Let's just drag and drop these guys in here. All right. You can speed up your process by just hitting processing, hit process, click the actual cluster. And in this case, we have one cluster which drives all four scans. If you had multiple clusters, then you would actually specify which cluster you want to process, but because we only have one, I'll just do either this or that, it doesn't matter because there's no extra stuff here. So we'll just hit that process. We, I typically don't want to colorize my scans because I want to see them in their grayscale image or their more accurate laser uh, return uh, form first. Let's do a dark scan point filter, that's okay. Distance filter, well, it is a scanner that only scans to maximum of whatever uh, an actual specific scanner does but this one was 150 uh, foot or 150 meter scanner it's about 500 feet but I know anything past let's say 350 feet is irrelevant so put it in here we will find spheres and they will be the smaller size that's correct and we will do a auto registration with targets why not all right, now just hit start and sit back and relax because this depending on the resolution setting and the number of scans can take a couple of minutes to a couple of hours. All right, so if everything went well and the processing finished, you will see successful results over here. You can see registration results also in your report. That's right here. So you can tell that mean distance is about three millimeters, but there was something that caused a 16.8 millimeter error throughout your scan you can investigate later. So this is, it just tells you, okay, must have worked. We're happy with the report. I can close it, verify. The verification is really just a top-down view. And it looks like if you knew where you went from where to where to where, and this kind of gives you an idea of that it seems to have worked. So let's just sign off on it. And when you sign off on it in the Explore tab, the software will actually put you or take you into the environment that was put together after you hit the processing. What I like to do here is like to go in and actually investigate, see what the automatic process dot did. So we see a sphere, we see somebody's head as a target that was recognized. 
uh, let's go to the next location we see this one was recognized properly looks like that was recognized too Ooh, we see a couple of false positives right here on a person Once again, that is correct. This guy is correct. And I believe, oh yeah, see there's a couple false positives over here also. Needless to say, if you don't care about false positives and actually investigating what's wrong, you could sign off on it. But because of that one weird error, I want to actually see what might have caused it. So if I go and I can right click the scan manager, unlock it. If I double click it, it shows me what kind of settings I actually used, which are useless right now. But over here I can see that there's a sphere 1 that caused a problem between scan 4 and scan 3. Without doing too much work, and we can actually go ahead and hit locate and you'll see that the sphere is recognized here. And because we weren't controlling or weren't typically you're not always cap able to uh, control the environment of where you put your targets we don't know if somebody walking out that door moved it kicked it did something to it so let's do this let's actually set it as an anti-correspondent what happens then when i hit the apply button is the routine rebalances everything out throwing out that one sphere. You notice we went from 16 millimeters being the worst, where the next one was about nine millimeters to four millimeters, which is perfectly acceptable on a scale like this. So now I'm happy. You can keep on going. If you have multiples, you can actually go ahead and remove this and remove this. But again, with four millimeters, this is unnecessary. You have to be a little bit careful with removing too many because if it's target-based registration, you can you only have so many targets. If you remove all of them, eventually the registration will fail and say, okay, well, I can't do this. We haven't uh, fixed this. This is still a problem, but we don't know what the underlying cause of the problem is. So the cause of that problem might have been that somebody actually kicked the sphere or um, did something to it, picked it up when they walked out but we're happy with the actual data. You see, we don't have any crazy data sets that would be, you know, doubled or anything. We don't have two surfaces. We don't have two floors. We don't have two ceilings in this case. So I'm happy to sign off on it. And by signing off on it, what I do is I typically just hit the lock button and this way everything's done. Now my next step would be, I could go ahead and actually start cleaning up the data, but we'll leave that for another video.